you have to pay a premium to enjoy the void space that comes along with this penthouse unit. Something that's very interesting is that on this particular step, which is step 9-1, drop off point, you have a gym. So we're gonna head in. Let's go. Permission control. We have the dog. Alright, hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of our new launch review series and today we are bringing you to a new district and this time around we're going to One North which is in District 5. We're going to cover one project that has recently been previewed over the weekend and joining me in the studio today are Lyndon and John. Hello. Hi. <laughs> mm. Yeah, today we're going to cover this very interesting project because uh, it has really been previewed over the weekend and there was uh, quite a good uptake in terms of the number of uh, people at a show flat. Uh, this is one of the projects that is also one of the uh, one of the two land sale uh, at the Slim Barracks area. So this is basically Parcel B. Mm. The project name is actually called The Hill at One North. If you are familiar in the area, you do know that there was also another new launch that was launched last year in April 2023 and that was actually Blossoms by the Park. Uh, mm. And that was actually one of the very successful launch uh, in that area. F actually, further down the road, uh, if we go back even into 2021, right? Yeah. We had a very popular launch called One of Eden. Yep. So this was the whole entire hype of the area because mm. we have a lack of supply in that mm. whole area. La. Correct. So uh, anyway, for One of, uh, if you're not uh, familiar with the area, that's basically an area where there's all the tech, the media, mm. the... Uh, the biotech. There's universities there. But these well. universities are like the big companies. Right. Yeah. Correct. So it's, it's a very, very up and coming area. Uh, we, they call it the Silicon Valley of Singapore. Mm. Uh, we're going to cover this project one north, uh, the hill at one north. And without further ado, let's go into the project facts. Maybe John, you want to take us through what this project is all about. Hi, all Mr. Right. John. All right. Okay. Uh, so just to quickly run through some of the uh, drier stuff for this project. The hill at one north. So the developer is Kingsford, and we are looking at a 142 units in total. The expected mm. TOP 2027. There will be mm. three blocks. So two blocks of a higher height of 11 story, and then one shorter block at seven story. Mm -hmm. Um, in I think all in all, this is the uh project that we want to look into because of mm. particularly the location itself. Mm. So later on, we'll be diving a bit more into the one north area. Mm. And I think most importantly, determining whether uh, this project is something that uh, you can consider as well. Mm. Yeah, from both, I think the rental play as well as, you know, what's upcoming in the area and more specifically, I think we, we also want to uh, compare on the growth between this project as well as some of the other projects in the area and other parts of Singapore in terms of capital growth versus rentability. Yeah. Mm. So that is the, the over essence of this whole entire episode that we're yeah. going to cover on that. I think uh, naturally you'll be thinking of whether it's a rental play, is it going to be a capital appreciation play, whether you're going to buy for own stay and stuff like that. We're going to cover that in details. But before that, I think let's talk a little bit about the developer. So they are known in the market, Kingsford, so they are not like, you know, some unknown developer. So... I think one of the most recent projects that they have actually launched at TOP is actually Normandon Park. Mm. Uh, it's a huge project in that area. Uh, they are also in Kingsford Water Bay as well as also Kingsford Hillview Peak. But of course, Kingsford uh, is a big brand, uh, up and coming project that they have also announced uh, would also be Chuan Park, which is also um, probably going to launch uh, in Q3 this year uh, as what they have announced. Uh, they have also bid up for one of the land in Marina Bay area. Yep. So, up and coming developer, um, really one of the veteran in the market, and they are coming in here for the one north uh, place. So if you look at the location wise, this is the entire general map of where uh, we are in the Bona Vista area. So based on my cursor, you can see on the screen, this is actually blossoms by the park, uh, of which Kingsford also bid for it. They were actually number two in the bid. They mm. actually lost out to EL development. Uh, this is actually, uh, they won the bid over here. So this is parcel B, this is parcel A, separated by this NTU alumni club. So we are actually smack right in the middle of the whole entire One North action. Yeah. So mm. this is where the hill at One North will be, between Bona Vista and also One North MRT station. Mm. Yep. And this area, I think uh, for those who are uh, not in the known, okay, uh, this is what we call as the Silicon Valley of Singapore. This is where all the tech info uh, companies they'll be coming in actually later on we'll be covering a lot more on you know what is really happening within this area because i think so much growth so much companies that are coming in uh, which means jobs 
which means that you are going to get your tenants pulled from there as well. Yeah, so I mean, of course, <coughs> I think earlier on when we were doing one of our new launch uh, review of Blossoms by the part, we mentioned before about the kind of like supply and the demand in the market itself. We do know that the kind of supply in the area is actually pretty limited. Uh, if you look at the within a 500, vicinity, 500 meters vicinity of uh, this launch project of the hill, we are only looking at probably about uh, two projects. Two thousand plus, one thousand plus units there about. Yep. Um, but if you look at the if number of supply in one of Eden, uh, yeah, correct. Yeah. So if, if you look at the number of um, demand, right? We talk about demand. Uh, we are looking at this is actually a brochure from JTC. In fact, JTC is the master developer for the one off area. Mm. Uh, they were commissioned to develop the whole entire one off in 2001. Mm. Uh, this is one from the flyer. They have already bought up the, um, the number of workers. And we talk about, and we're not talking about any ordinary kind of workers, but workers, they are skilled workers. They are either working in the bio um, tech industry, the media industry. And they, we are looking at easily about 50,000 workers in that one north area. Mm. And we have not even talked about the greater one north. Mm. Mm. So looking at that kind of supply, I have also tabulated in terms of the number of supply. So this is basically the number of projects that is around uh, 500 meters away from where we are located. So you have Blossoms by the Park, you have uh, one north residences, one of Eden, as well as also Rochester. So total number of units over here is only about 1,002. Mm. Mm. Very low in demand. I mean, very low in supply. supply. Yeah. Right. I think I want to link a bit more as to why we are bringing this fact up. I think uh, across Singapore, usually, I mean, when we are looking at the uh, location per se, like for example, specifically location, let, let's say no, the Novena Med Medical Hub, mm. for the medical workers that are working within that area itself, they are usually looking just within that proximity, Novena area. For those, I mean, subsequently when the Pong Pongo Digital Digi Districts will come out, mm. that's when the tenant demand, the rental demand is going to come up within Pongo itself. So, which we always try to link that to the proximity. Mm. Yeah, so within one of itself, uh, this is the supply of units that we are having. Yeah. Okay, and the number of jobs that are going to happen there, it's going to be much, much way more. A lot more. I think so the, I th all the tech companies, your, your, your likes of your Grab, you know, all these big companies, mm. the tech companies, Shopee, you yeah. know, they are all already here in one north area. area mm. already. I think we've got one slide that's showing like the companies that are there. Uh, I didn't put it in here, but yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you know that you basically all the big brands, uh, the, the, the big brands in the industry are all here already in one north. So you can see that this whole entire map is actually the one north development area. Uh, they have split between the Fusion Police, which is the dark blue color. The Bio Police will actually be the orange color, mm. and which is this area. And then you have your Media Police, which is your uh, Media Corps, yep. and all the media production area. This will be the area. So this star is actually where the hill at One North is. La. So in a way, you are really in the middle of the whole entire action. So mm. I just wanted to chime in here also. Yeah. Uh, because I my, my sister actually works in uh, Unilever. Ah. So when I went to our office, it's really a massive day. Like even take the heritage buildings as their campus ground mm. uh, of office. And I have a cousin also working in uh, Procter & Gamble. Mm. When they go overseas for work, right? Uh, let's say over a six months to a year period, right? People, they are always looking for rental within walking distance to their workplace. Mm. So especially all these expats or PMETs that are coming mm. in, it's very important for them to be able to uh, live within close proximity yes, to the work. and also just to walk to work mm. uh, with full amenities around like mm. if you've been to one of the Biopolis the Fusionopolis uh, it is uh, I would say almost everything is there mm. you want to go to a bar it's there you want to yep. go to a restaurant it's there mm. I think only maybe lacking is a movie theatre I yeah, think it's very so natural. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's just a very natural way of life that you want to be close to your office. Mm, mm. And uh, especially if you're coming from overseas, you want to, to be living near, you don't want to be spending time commuting. Mm, mm, yeah. So walking distance as well as uh, the, the amenities that you require are all within walking distance mm. as well. This is actually the map um, for the hill at One North. Putting down the, the, the kind of like distance of the various amenities from your retails to your education. I mean, in, in fact, for education, it also fulfills a couple of uh, good schools in the area as well. You have your CHIJ, uh, sorry, you have your ACS, you have I your CHIJ as Fair, well. Fairfield is the one. Yeah, Fair yeah. Fairfield, 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 Fairfield is, is the as well, strongest. Right. La. Mm. Mm. Both the primary and secondary school. La. But I was asking John just last night, do you think any parents move uh, for their kids who are going to tertiary schools? <coughs> because ACJC yeah. is there. I mean, not so much, really. <laughs> to be very, very I honest, so. I, 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 mean, I people I will be independent. I mean, the, the kids will be independent uh, enough to travel. Not so much for tertiary schools, but I think that uh, 
because I I've known people who are really gunning for fair fair few. Yes. Mm. And fair few, mm. then they you know they 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 are just pulling out all the stops. They are moving close. They are mm. doing parent volunteer just to get within that one km as well, just mm. for the extra chance. I would say yeah. maybe there's a chance for international schools lah. Ah, there uh, as well. Of uh, like I would say overseas families that are coming bringing their entire family to Singapore. You have Tanglin Trust. Uh, also there uh, mm. within driving distance so i think that's one of the strong ones yeah but i think predominantly is more towards the the um offices that's around the mm. area where we're looking at Correct. probably more of the pmets yep. uh plus also i mean end of the day transport i think transport is really a like an oversell in singapore because mm. i think right now everywhere you go is a train station so i think it's very well connected we all know that how well connected the whole entire circle line is you know uh, and, and basically it's very very well connected to your northeast line to your east west line so in a way connection is great yep. in the area back to this slide which shows the supply of uh, within 500, 500 meters but mm. if you would extend that by a kilometers uh i mean another 500 meters so you go by a kilometers you have a lot more units mm. uh but also we recognize the fact that there are some of them that is actually more towards the bona vista side yeah yeah than the one north side but total number of supply, once you extend the radius of um, one kilometers, you bring you to about 2,500 plus units. Mm. Then again, hold this number in your mind because this is the number of supply in the market. Demand is about 50,000 odd workers around the area. Now, if I have to break down in terms of the kind of bedroom types around the area within one kilometers as well, you're looking at probably a lot more of the three bedders, but I think the three bedders largely on the older developments. Mm. The newer developments are largely the two bedders as well as probably also the one bathers as well. Mm. Mm. So this um this this mix of the bedroom types uh would actually contribute to the positioning of the hill at one north. Right. So now if you look at the side map of where uh the hill at one north is, it's actually occupying a smaller land plot. Mm. Uh, a smaller land plot as versus towards blossoms by the park. Yeah. Uh, henceforth, the number of units is also much lesser as well. Correct. 142 yeah. units yeah. split across three towers. In terms of facilities-wise, I think this is pretty standard. They yeah. have yeah. nothing fancy pool. Out the tennis court. <laughs> right, okay. <Yeah. laughs> no tennis court, right. Mm. But at least you get a pool. Uh, you get pretty much everything you want uh, in, a, in a condominium, I would say. Uh, decent kind of like facilities. Units distribution is the interesting part. So now if you look at the number of units distribution, we can see that out of the 142 units, 51% of it are largely the two beders. And I think probably that's the reason why they're doing that. The direction is qu quite clear. Very clear, right? Very clear. So by this, you know what is the developer going after already. The two beders, the three beders. In fact, look at the four beders. There's only six yeah. units there occupying only a 4% market share in yeah. terms mm. of the whole entire development. <laughs> <laughs> so I think just to give some context, usually, I mean, uh, it's very nat natural, smaller projects mm. uh, would be for rental play, would be for investors, single couple maximum, uh, mm. not the family profile. Fa family profile naturally, I mean, three bidders and above four and, and four bidders as well. But we can see that in terms of the percentage, in terms of the unit distribution, uh, a lot lesser. I think they also perhaps took some reference from uh, Blossom as well. I think just now we covered one mm. very interesting topic before we started this recording. Yeah. We were talking about the profiling of the future Singaporeans. Right. Mm. Right. Um, as to the whole entire bigger picture of buyer profile. Mm. Right. Maybe we want to share a little bit more on that. That's just our thoughts. So, yeah, that, that point actually was brought up by Lyndon. I think uh, increasingly on social media, I mean, I on when we are just scrolling, 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 we are just seeing increasingly the this growing trend, not uh, prevalent yet. Yeah. yeah uh, I, I wouldn't say it's... it's very strong now mm. but uh personally my peers mm. uh they are starting to go into this segment called the dings uh dual dings? income no kids right so uh so let, let me ask you john yeah. if you were a dual income mm. no kids yep. how many bedrooms would you need also so ideally mm. uh dual income no kids it really depends on also the affordability. Mm. But, but ideally, uh, if you are looking uh, for for a, a home that you are comfortable staying mm. in, mm. Um, you know, a bit of a fast free maintenance, you want to keep it a, a bit smaller in size, quantum wise is also palatable, maybe like a two beta, two plus study, mm. you know, just a, just a study space for your workspace and then one additional room just in case for mm. anything. Yeah, so uh, that, that is an increasing trend that we are seeing uh, more and more. I, I think some of my friends as well, uh, I think it's by choice as well mm. that uh, perhaps not having kids as well and uh, then subsequently the 
the financial means, you know, um, they, you know, they, they actually have got good financial means. Yep. Okay, they've got good financial means and then I think the ultimate outcome, the end goal in mind, it's always for both of the uh, spouse mm. to have their own property. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So subsequently, one will be own stay, one will be investment. Mm. Yeah. So that's why I think generally, uh, the developers didn't go into a full-blown investment kind of category mm. for this layout. Mm. They still wanted to keep the option uh, open for a three beta because whether you are two people mm. or whether you are one person, mm. ideally you want to have a spare guest bedroom. Right. If one is your uh, your main master, the other one is your office, you would want that third bedroom also. To be flexi la, in a Correct. way. Correct. So I think this is more of a future planning. Yeah. Uh, even though sadly, uh, fam- uh, things are getting more popular also mm, mm. Uh, because people want to enjoy life as it is mm, uh, mm. right now and they are happy with their life, how mm. they are with their partners also. But, but the point is that there is, um, with that, la, with that mm. profile, then I would guess that naturally the demand from this type of profile, they, they wouldn't be going into the ultra-large kind of units. Correct, correct. So that's why they are sticking within, even this is, just to take note, uh, everyone, this, because of when they had purchased their land, uh, this is pre harmonization right. by URA. Mm. So we are still at the old kind of layout where you get your compact betas at about mm. 900 plus square feet. Right. Uh, and then you get your slightly premium plus studies mm. uh, at about 1,000 plus square feet. Mm. Mm-hmm. So uh, they are still not going for like the 1,004, mm. 1,005 kind of layout or even 1,002. Mm. Uh, because the 1,002 is already four betas. Mm. So. I think that's what the developers have been trying to do. Mm. Uh, they are still trying to stick within fight yes. affordability right. with the increasing PSF. La. Yeah, right. I think this is a proven size yeah. uh, for quite some time already. Uh, and this is something that uh, it makes sense in the market. It's not mm. too small, but it's also not too big in a sense where it pushes uh, the quantum to something that's not palatable. Yeah. But okay. I think this number wise, uh, if you take on reference to Blossoms by the Park, uh, which I have on the next slide. So Blossoms by the Park, I have put it side by side. You can clearly see that there's a difference. Blossoms by the Park actually has a one bed plus study. They also have a three bedroom dual key. Mm. But as of the time of recording right now, all the one bedrooms, two bedrooms have been fully sold out. Yeah. Mm. And, and that, that is a sign. That is a sign, right? Yep. Three bedroom only left one unit, three bedroom dual key, one unit, and four bedroom premium, 22 units. Okay. Honestly, I'm surprised that the hill didn't have a uh, one bed or a studio or even a one bedroom plus study. Yep. I think largely because the number of unit size is very small, 142 units. Doesn't mm. make sense for them to build a one bed. They would rather go mm. for two beders for a, a better bet in a, in a way, like in terms of the market offerings. Yep. Because once you have more units, you Correct. can offer more variety. Mm. Uh, but when you have lesser units, you have to make sure which is the one that gives you a better return. Mm. Yeah, I think yeah. it's more optimal that way. Yeah, correct. In terms of, I think, design, building, and space uh, planning wise, mm. it would be better to just go all in on, on two betas. Mm. Yeah. But, but what you see mm. over from here, right, the size is a bit of different. Mm. You realize that the two bedrooms in the hill at One North is Can slightly build. larger than the one from Blossoms by mm. the Park. But three bedrooms wise, Blossoms by the Park is actually bigger in a certain sense. Right. Four bedroom wise is also bigger as well. So you can see that there's a bit of difference, but you can clearly see that um, the strategy by Kingsford for the hill uh, is actually to bet on the two bedrooms. Because they know that the two bedrooms are the ones that will be the fastest to be absorbed in the market. I think it's a good bet. I mean, looking at how Blossoms perform. Mm. Right. If you look at the numbers, uh, and then if you lay out the kind of like mix right over here, um, this is actually how it looks like uh, for the kind of like side plan. So you can see that the 19 block, block 19 is actually the one that is up to level 7. Mm. Mm. Level 7, yeah, right. Level 7. So yep. it started off on level 4, 5, 6, and 7. Level 1 to 3, uh, because it's the tapered kind of landscape uh, right there. So there's also a resident, there's also a commercial shop um, that is offering for sale right there in yeah. uh, the hill. Very similar to the one at Blossoms by the Park, mm. which is one um, title deed for restaurant. So for over here, the hill, uh, you have one lower block, which is uh, up to level 7, and this two is up to level 11. Four bedroom is occupying only one stack, uh, which is the more of the premium one because it's the furthest away from the road. Uh, it is also more towards like facing towards the south, southeast kind of like orientation. Block 19 is the one that actually has all the three bedroom plus study. Mm. Also very interesting of how they want to place it in a way. Mm. 
And this unit's distribution also comes with penthouse as well, as well as what you can see over here. So this is basically the munis mixed. Mm. Any thoughts on this? I feel that uh, from what I hear always from uh, my clients is that when they purchase a certain project, especially in a smaller development, mm. right, they want to know what are the stacks in their lift lobby. Uh, mm. Whether is it dominated by three bidders or own stay or is it uh, tenanted mm. and all that kind of thing. Uh, I think it's just a small personal preference which the developers have done a bit better uh, trying to swing the entire majority of the bigger size units towards block 19. Mm. I mean, yeah, la. yeah. You, usually that's that's more likely higher prob probability for own stay. Correct. Yeah. correct. I, I think if you're just an investor, you're going to be renting it out. I don't yep. think they care very much. Mm. Other than the this block. La. Yeah. But you realize that actually the two bedrooms there's only two stacks only. La. Mm. One in each block. We have only one here in four and one in thirteen. Yep. The rest are all two bedroom plus study. So interestingly they actually have a lot of uh variations of floor plans for two plus study and also for the three bedrooms uh type. So let we will have a look at the floor plans. But looking at this side plan, I think uh I mean it just suddenly struck me really quite uh, nothing out of the extraordinary. It's it's quite typical. It's quite normal. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a it's a how they even maximize the whole entire. Yeah. It's really quite fast free in the sense that okay, you get one pool and then you know 142 units, kind of smaller type of pro uh, project over there. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, but moving on, I think I think let's nothing get to the. I, I, think, I think I think the key thing is to really share with the audience. Uh, I think more on the numbers part. That, mm. that that would be the really key thing. Yeah. So yeah. before we hit the number, just quickly run through the floor plan mm. first, like, Just so, so that our you know calm audience basically know how it actually looks like. So the two bedrooms, this is the smallest unit, seven three two square feet. Nothing much. Uh, unit. I mean, nothing much. Fanciful. I would say that it's pretty decent, and this is proven to be something that is uh of the norm right now. Mm. So Very you typical. have yeah all the bedrooms on one side. Uh, the only yeah. key thing I would say is that the kitchen is not a kitchenette. So that's the only thing that I like about it's it. It's not kitchenette. Yeah, it's not a kitchenette. As right. you can see, you can glass it up. Uh, you can enclose it. Uh, but, so but that it's could not be an closed option. up, right? Yeah, it's not closed up. La. But I give but it an option. It's a, it's a ported over to one it corner. You the la. Possibility. It's not it's something that's It's not like one row correct, kind of like correct. Ki kitchenette. La. Two bedrooms, uh, the master bedroom and the smaller bedroom. I would say these are all pretty decent. Mm. La. I mean, of course, as all the two bedrooms, uh, this is actually the one that come, doesn't come with the... Uh, ventilation in the bathroom, which is pretty much very standard uh, nowadays. PPVC, PPVC, PPVC as well. Yeah, right. So no hacking. So no according to the anything. brochure, um, all these thick walls, uh, you can't remove them. They have to stay. So you have to work around it in a way. Yep. So now you go to two plus study. Uh, you basically have a couple of more variation. Uh, you there's a lot more. So what I've pulled out are uh, basically the the more of the unique ones. Yep. So of course there are some other layouts. There's like a mirror image and here and there. Mm. But the size is pretty much uh, as it is right over plus, here. Uh, actually, quite comfortable. I mean, by by today's standards. If you look, yeah, if mm. you look at the two plus study, they are all pretty much dumbbell except for one particular layout, yep. which is this. Mm. But personally, I would like this. Because you you like the study to be a bit isolated. Ah. He likes the study to be a useful study. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because if you think about, if you look at the rest of the other layout, right, the study, you have to pass by the study. In to go into the bedroom. Mm. Yeah, but can you imagine if you are doing your work halfway and then your wife is cooking wok hei okay tan la. chao fan? I mean, that's the... that's the. No, it, it really <laughs> de depends. I think it really depends on personal preference. I mean, if that that uh, two-bed plus study, 786 square feet that with the study by the kitchen, that one, if you have got a helper, I mean, that works very well. If mm. you plan to use it as a store storage room, you know, you want a storeroom to be really tight at one corner, that works well as well. But I think if you are the individual that really wants your bedroom to be a bit bigger, mm. you know, to sort of uh, incorporate as part of your bedroom too, then the other... Uh, layout works better. La. And you yeah. realize that the wall, you actually can knock it down. You can, you mm. can. Yeah. Then that so room becomes big. Even much bigger than the master bedroom. Uh, but you cannot connect the bath. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, well, yeah, technically you can't. You know, recently I was speaking with a PE and I was saying like, uh, is it a dead, dead no that you can't hack uh, dark, dark, thick walls? He says not. <laughs> he says that as long as you are willing to pay the money, uh, we can do assessment 
and then we can see whether it can you, be. You you didn't hear that from us. No no no. <laughs> but but the the only reason why I'm sharing this right is that uh we we want to give you actual tips also. Mm. Uh, as long as you feel that it is worth the investment, you can consider because when I got my house, uh, you know service yard there's always a beam on the top, right? Yes. Oh right. Yeah, and they say that cannot be hacked, ma. Yeah. Yeah, but I found out that I can hack that beam. So you, you mean to say as long as the P gives the endorsement? Correct, because they need to measure what is the weight of how many floors above you and all that oh. kind of thing. It's like, okay, if everyone hacked it, I don't think it can be hacked already. Right. Yeah. But so how would they know if somebody else hacked it? So that's why they will have to do, that's why they are so expensive. They have to do their homework in testing. What's the load testing if I minus this one beam and then I got three floors above me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it, I could hack it, but you guess how much was it? How much? Just for him to sign the paperwork, right? It cost me five thousand dollars, but I didn't hack it in the end, nah. Just one beam. Right. I mean, that's yeah. the that's why they say the PE, the signature is actually very, yes. very expensive. Yes. Yeah. But then again, coming back to this, uh, of course, the couple of variations, uh, definitely there are some that is very optimal. Like you know, this is what we like it because you technically you can enclose the mm. kitchen because it's really done in a way that you just have to do a pocket door or a glass sliding door. You can you can cover it. This one as well. This one, unfortunately, you can't because it's an open kitchenette. Mm. This as well, you can't, but you get a double galley, one on le- one on each side. Yeah, which is pretty common nowadays in uh, quite a few tree bathers. The moment you open your door, you know you are flanked left and right by your kitchen also. I think it's also towards that kind of like lifestyle of people changing, right? <laughs> I think the developers just have to fit within the increasing PSF mm. and they have to be more creative in mm. their architectural layout. And right? looking at what they can compromise on. Yeah, because honestly, walkways waste, waste a lot of space. Right. Yeah. So all these layouts, basically you don't have any much walkway for your area, except mm. for this. Mm. The next one that I want to share with you would be the tree bader. So it ranges from 947, which is more like a compact kind of layout. In fact, this layout is something that you'll see very often uh, in, in today's uh, very new typical. launches. Very typical mm. kind of layout. All bedrooms flush to one side. You have a kitchen here. Uh, either your dining is here or here and then you have a little walkway entering in. The larger unit will be 1044, but I think the larger 1044 actually comes from this extra walkway. Yeah. Mm. Right. Plus Great also for, um, privacy, la. I mean if you're looking for privacy and then you get a bit more of that home home shelter storage space. Mm. Mm. There are only three layouts la, that comes with home shelter if you realize. The rest actually don't have. So two of them doesn't come with a home shelter. So strange, uh, that some have got, got the home shelter outside. I think it's also I uh, probably due to the block where ah. it's located. Probably, probably. I'm honestly lost with this home shelter eh, because <laughs> like you know there was one era that home shelters was in the staircase. Then after that there was another era that home shelters was moved out of the staircase because BCA said that oh, yeah, right. uh, sh- uh, staircases need to be naturally ventilated. Yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. Then, 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 then like. I, I, I don't know what's the requirement now. now, eh. now Maybe they're just confused. Don't know is it in, inside or outside. Correct. <laughs> yeah, I remember those days. Uh, those days where where they don't have a home shelter inside the unit, then they'll have it all in a common the, walkway. Yeah. Yes, common yeah. walkway or the staircase, staircase right, and yeah. all that kind of thing. Yeah. So maybe someone from BCA, you can let us know what is the requirements now. Uh, we'll love to have a chat with you. Yeah. yeah. But otherwise, this is pretty much standard. If you realize all the bedrooms are all flush to one side, there's no like kind of like a uh, dumbbell kind of layout. In fact, there's someone that has a extra long walkway for the privacy. Very this is long. also very uh, private as well. Technically, you when a door, you can see a living hall area. Mm. So, so with, with with that, right? Can I just ask? So if the two beta needs to go to home shelter, do they knock on the three beta and can I borrow? No, they go shelter? to the staircase. No, the they go to the staircase. Is it right. common space? Yeah, oh, they, they go to the staircase. Go inside there. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. But then okay. those that got the home shelter inside, then they don't need to go and they squeeze. Probably, out. Oh, they okay. probably calculated the 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 number of people that it requires to go to the common and. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving I'm, on. Just, I'm just wondering, like, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, this one is actually the three plus study. Um, three plus study. You also have a couple of layout. Interestingly, you have one that right. is this super long kind of like. <laughs> layout, <laughs> you realize? <laughs> when I was tabulating this, I was like, wow, this is a bit different. 1087 square feet. You have a very longitudinal. Mm. This is like an ultra portrait layout. <laughs> yeah. Like it's like a macro lens. You know, those kind of shoot, shoot football and then the telescopic yeah. lens. All yeah. the way into your bedroom. Eh. Your main door can see all the way into your bedroom. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh. That's true. From the main door, you can see all, <laughs> all the way, the way into your master, master bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> very interesting layout. It's probably the first time I see something like this, but very <laughs> unique. 
Yeah, but one uh, zero. Is, yeah. one but I'm guessing it's stack uh, 11 and 11. Uh, nah. study 11. Yeah. You know. It may not be. No, because yeah. that's the only long one that I see. It might be yeah. this one as well. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's a very interesting layout. Yeah, but anyway, this is basically the the study is actually a very flexi space lah. Uh, but in fact, mm. the study for the triple study is actually smaller than what you can get from the two betas, if you realize, mm. except for this particular one. So in fact, this layout is pretty interesting because technically, you can buy this and turn this into a four bedroom. Yeah, it's like a dumbbell, you know, like junior master on yes. the right. Then. Yes, but because you see that the size of this study is pretty much the same as your common bedroom size. Yep. Very close. Mm. So, people who buy this, this unit, technically they can turn it into a four bedroom. And you're entering at a quantum that is actually very, very much, much affordable than the four bedrooms that, that you have mm. in this development, which is at 1227 square feet. Mm. Uh, pretty similar, don't you see? So, you yeah, have the junior master right here, right? Mm. Lacking a bathroom. La. Bathroom law, yeah. I think it's a challenge when you have four bedrooms and you only have two bathrooms. But this one has three. Yeah. Which so is great. So, oh, so if we right. convert the other one, uh, it will oh be a yeah, challenge. Of yeah, la, but I think, I mean, of course, it gives you the flexibility. La. Yeah. Bedroom mm. sizes, uh, very typical la, by today's standards. Mm. Yeah. I think uh, I think for some folks, they will find it you know, small and all, but all can fit queen size bed. By today's standards, it is like this. Mm. Mm. But you realize that they don't have a yard. All the units here doesn't come with a yard. Dry your laundry in the balcony. No, in all honesty, right? I think majority of people are either drying it in the balcony now or, uh, or having a dryer yeah. already. So that service yard, right, to separate your kitchen mm. from your uh from your WC no uh from your uh from your service yard. All right. Uh, because maybe you might be airing your clothes is totally moving we are phasing out away from it this was very prevalent especially in the lentil yep. mansion where you suddenly had three bathers right that are so compact and then uh we shared with the client saying that hey uh, nowadays majority of people are using dryers mm. or they are allowing installation of like your your drying racks at mm. the balcony already mm, mm. Uh, so so that you know the lifestyle has to change lah, and i think it takes time to change also mm. like personally of course i prefer a service yard but if it doesn't have it's not something that i would die mm. uh, it's without, not a game changer la. also yeah, and also changer. people will also see that they don't want to pay the extra dollars for the yard correct they rather they rather have the space put into somewhere else yep right okay yeah. so now let's come to the more interesting portion the mm. price yes this is the part <sighs> that i want to talk about so the pricing wise, uh, this is a comparison between the parcel A and parcel B. Parcel A, uh, of course, this is Blossoms by the park. Uh, this is parcel B, which is the here at One North. You realize mm. that mm. actually uh, Kingsford bought the land at a slightly lower price than parcel A. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think largely because I think location wise uh, is more further backwards yep. than parcel A, which is a more towards the main road area. Mm. But if you look at the kind of like break even pricing, 1.9, if you put that into our H prop land lens, uh, this is the estimated selling price based on the 10% profit margin. But based of on the course, 10%? Uh. Yeah, 10%. Wait, no, why, why, why do you put it at 10? I mean, default, uh, by each prop. Uh, I mean, oh I want to put higher. Default, can, uh. Uh. But anyway, right. based on 10% is about 2001, which we think right. it may not be. La. It co confirm won't be. La. It will not oh be. Okay. La. I mean, if it launched at this price, I think you will John will buy. Uh, of course. John will choke. But no, la, no la, of course, it, it, it's not. I, I, think, I think most importantly, uh, coming to this, segment about the pricing and all i think mm. we really want to uh share with the audiences especially because uh you you guys are looking at us mm. you know for our opinions and all mm. and, and and sharing exactly why this is you know something that you should consider or something that you probably should skip mm. i think then later let, let's let's move on a bit more yep. so the the selling price by a 10 percent profit margin is about 2001 mm. but by right. today's new launch standards in the rcr uh Technically, it should be a bit higher. La. Right. Yeah. So, of course, before we even go into that, um, we know that Blossoms by the Park uh, was a fantastic project. When mm. it launched on day one, I think they sold close to more 73 than 73%. Percent. 73% uh, percent is extremely healthy by today's standards. Right. But I think no, but there was one point uh, about that, that, that you mentioned earlier about the point that it launched that. to taper down yeah. in terms yeah. of that kind of like uh, market performance mm -hmm. so because after blossoms by the park if you look at all the rest of the other new launches throughout the whole entire year of 2023 i think there were only about two projects 
or one project that yeah, stands out a bit more. Yeah, one yeah. of them is Jaden. Jaden. Then of course, your most recent will be your Lentor Mansion. Uh, Lentor Mansion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We had a wa- uh, Water Estate also. Water Estate, yeah, of course. Not the Ultra Lux uh, segment, Water Estate also uh, do extremely well let's, as well. Let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about the reason why. Let's talk about the reason um, why they perform well actually because okay. this this is important yeah I, I think okay so personally i think that lento mentioned was priced well right okay Jaden, Jaden was the pent up demand la. uh, right. no no, no. I'll, i'd love to hear why why Jaden was no because so of the of the ET integrated development <laughs> being it's integrated i mean it's integrated plus also i feel it's just a it's just a west side best side kind of and pan up demand. Yeah, in that <laughs> area because really got nothing else, ma. <laughs> nothing right. was in that area and yeah. Yeah. for so long. Mm. Uh, and you are one of the the I would say your flagship project la, of okay. the Jurong okay. East. For Watton? Watton is uh I would say is the quantum of it. Because okay. you could enter a three beta at 3.05 mm. million. Mm. 3.05 million in a district 10, right? Mm. Plus free hole. Plus free hole. Mm. And yeah. let okay la, the size is is acceptable and I think it's like 900 no low 900 plus which is feet. what you get over here yeah, well. which is what generally mass market people get okay right. so that's why it was snapped mm. so there are strong reasons why projects perform well on mm. the first weekend correct mm. right okay and and yeah la, so these are the these are the clues but la, we, yeah. we, we just to state also blossom by the park right mm. when they launch and they so 73% majority of it was the two beders, uh, mm. the one beders that was snapped up. La. Which is what you see over here. Yeah. So which is why the one beder, the two beders, uh, they were all sold out mm. basically on the launch weekend. Mm. Uh, I did a comparison based on a launch, which was back in 2023, April, and now in 2024, March, all the way down to Jan, uh, the number of the numbers, I just going to average out the PSF. Mm. Uh, just by a one year mark, you are probably seeing about a hundred dollars increase. PSF, uh. Close to hundred dollars PSF increase la. Mm. But largely also because uh, the the recent launches are all I mean the, the earlier launches they're all the one beta and the two beta smaller units. While the most recent sales they're all the uh, bigger size unit, mm. which are uh, the PSF is actually lower la. Mm. We did a price matrix. Of course we, we know that uh, there was some um discussion in the market saying that um, two bedrooms here in what the here at one north it's going to start off at a pricing of 1.9 odd million dollar. So based on 1.9 odd million, based on this table, this is a two bedroom, which means that you'll probably be looking at a PSF of about 2006. 2006, mm. yeah. There about, because this will hit you to the 1.9 range. So 1.9, okay, I, I think this 1.9 million, this number is going to pop up a, a, a few more times later in the conversation as well. I think this 1.9 million is the ma- magic number that we are looking at right. in comparison. La. Okay, yep. yeah. Three bedrooms will start off at about three, uh, two point three odd million dollar. So yeah. you'll probably be looking at slightly lower PSF of about two thousand four to two thousand four fifty mm. for three bedroom. Four bedroom, they are saying that it's about three point two odd million dollars. So you'll be looking at a range of about two thousand five. So I would say that the average PSF for mm. the hill will probably be around two point four to two point six PSF. Mm. Wait, wait, you're you're saying that the three bedrooms will launch at 2004 PSF. Yeah. I mean, they, then they, they, that, that they naturally becomes that sweet spot already. They were saying that the price, but then again, don't forget, the number of four bedrooms right here is only like six units or four units. Oh, so they are riding on the rarity, the, yeah. the supply thing? Yeah, correct. Because right. you, you, back to the king, back to um, Blossoms by the Park, mm. the number of four bedroom premium that's still available right now is 22 units. units. So you can see that actually the demand, well there, is there a demand for a bigger size unit out there? I think that's the question that we have to answer. Okay, but if you're telling me three baders going for 2004, I think then that's worth a look. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is actually the, the remaining units is Blossoms by the Park. You can see that three bedrooms right now, one, one, 22 units of four bedroom premium. Four bedroom normal units are all sold out. Pricing wise, four bedroom premium is going for 3.4 mil for the lower price unit to the most expensive 4.1 mil. This is Blossoms by the Park. Mm. Mm. Right. So if you look at our pricing right over here, you also be looking at around for a four bedroom. This is more, I would say, the smaller unit la, because the 1227 versus 1300 odd uh, PR square feet for the Blossoms of the Park four bedroom, this is actually smaller. Mm. Price quantum, of course, will be more palatable in a way. Yep. But then again, don't forget that this is only a major minority number of units. The majority of the units is all around here. Mm. Yep. Right. So, mm, magical questions is that I think we will answer like, you know, is it safe to enter? Why should people be looking at a hill at one-off? Let's talk first about what is the target audience that the developer is really looking mm. at first. And I think that the angle 
I mean, looking f- firstly from the unit distribution, mm. looking at the location, looking at, um, I mean, from from these two, it's quite clear. It's quite clear. It's from the investor. Mm. Okay, looking to buy and then after that rent out. Right. So let's anger the discussion from this. Mm. I, I think then that will make a lot more. Do sense we have the numbers for that to show? Viewers. We have right. Yeah. So this is actually mm. the number that we want to show. Yes. So. Uh, yeah, so generally, I would say that uh, in terms of rental you right, if we take a 1.6 million uh, based on the latest transaction of rental, which is at 7,001 uh, in one of residences, mm. uh, this 1,003 to 1,004, right? Okay, let, let me re- re- recap a bit. Uh. So we go up, right? Uh, when I first did my research, I was looking at it. I was like, eh, wow, actually... Majority of the units there are quite sized quite well. Yeah. Thousand plus. Then I thought like, wow, maybe three bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> maybe three bedroom. Mine has shifted. A lot of people. Then when I further dive deeper into it, right, it's because they were uh, a different kind of layout. Yes. So which we'll share later on. But uh, these are majority of them all two bedders. Mm. So at two bedders, if we are looking at about an average price of 1.6 million, you are looking at about 5 to 6% rental yield. Mm. Uh, honestly, 5 to 6% rental yield is pretty decent already in today's market. Mm. Uh, this is prevalent and very obvious, especially in such a Silicon Valley in Singapore. Mm, mm. So that's why. Then we move on to the rental uh, transactions in that area. Just in gen alone, if we are looking at two projects, uh, one of residences, and Rochester residences, we have a total of uh, 26 rental transactions in two months. Mm. Uh, I just did our average. If I have a year, uh, it's about 18 per month Mm. and 216. If I round down to about 200 uh, rental transactions a year in that area of these two projects, right, I'm looking at a good 30% take up rate in the entire supply there. Mm. Okay, because so that's, that's for the take-up rate. La. Yeah, that, that's the take-up rate for okay. rental because we only have 771 units available for rental within a 500-meter radius of one North MRT. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, okay, so that's a very rate. strong take-up rate. Take-up rate is strong. Okay, we we accept, we, we mm. c- conclude and we de- deduce that the take-up rate for, for that particular yes. area will, will be strong. I mean, for that location itself, mm. Yeah. That's, so, that's that. Yeah. Yeah. So just to ca- uh, go further, if I go into comparisons and preferred size, right? So you realize, right? In one north residences, we only have three units to buy now. Hmm. So like then it makes me wonder, like, eh, then what happened to the rest? Uh, their breakdown is, uh, I think the three beta, four beta you can omit is because they don't have uh based on, uh, the COS website, they only have one, uh, two bedrooms. Mm. Yeah. So uh, there's not much to buy in one of itself, not much to rent. Mm. Uh, one of Eden, you cannot look at the rental uh, because it is not built yet. Yep. It only TOPs next year, if I'm not yep. wrong. Right. But in essence, to buy, uh, we have a lot of the majority at the two beta. Mm. Uh, three betas, yes, a few. One beta, very little. Uh, I think the good thing is also because we have the ABSD of 60% for foreigners. So a lot of foreigners are not planning to buy anytime soon. Right. Those that I already own, they are not planning to sell also because they'll be slapped with the 60% ABSD. Mm. But when we go further out in Rochester, then you have a, a different number. La. You have quite a few units available to buy and rent. Uh, this, my guess, right, is likely because of the, I would say, Larger units? Yeah, they are much larger units. Right. Uh, maybe the PMETs, the expats there, they don't need such a big unit. Uh, Costing-wise, because it's very simple, if you are renting about the same uh, PSF rental there, uh, you pay for a larger unit, you're going to pay much, much more in rent uh, because mm. they are about 20% bigger than uh, their competitors. Mm, mm. Yeah. Let me provide alternative viewpoints. Mm. Mm, sure. Okay, so I think that... Uh, let's go back to the previous one about One North. I think One North, uh, the lack of supply there could mean another thing, mm. which is that, uh, I mean, owners could have put it up for sale, cannot sell, mm. then chose to take, take it down. Because, or perhaps for the fact that 
uh, the price hasn't hit what they are expecting to sell at. Actually, I have the transactions of one North residences. Ah, okay. They have pulled up. Uh-huh. 2023 all the way to 2024. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, so just now, we were also looking at this a little bit more in mm. the sense that, I mean, the number of transactions that have happened uh, within one North residences mm. as well as Rochester. I think, uh, I mean, it's out, all out there for everyone to see. Mm. And I think that uh, personally, I feel that in terms of the volume transaction for Rochester wise, if we go and count them specifically for 2023 last year, uh, for a project, this is about what's, what's 400 plus four, units. 400 plus four, units. Four, we are looking four, at six, uh. 13, if I, I'm not wrong. Mm. 18. Okay. 18 in 2023. Rochester. Okay. Right. Yeah. So 18, well, um, not not fantastic if you are to ask me. Okay. Yeah. It's about 5%. Yeah. Nah. I mean, yeah, for a 400 plus units. Mm. But I mean, it's expected. It's expected for, for there in a sense that you are um, in the area whereby it's, it's really generally very, very investor rental driven. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and just to add on, also, uh, I think to solidify John's point, right? Uh, it is also shown that right now, uh, as of today, right, at one at Rochester residences, uh, there are forty eight units to buy. Mm. Okay, so, so yeah, so I I I've got one point about this one. Mm. I have been to the project. Mm. The unit, I mean, layout as Lyndon mentioned, the build itself, the, I mean. The huge size, but it's two bader. Mm. Uh, usually, I, I, the, the one that I saw is like a dual layer kind of, du- dual floor kind of. Duplex, ah. Duplex kind of ah. layout. I mean, uh, for a larger size unit, typically because PSF wise, you, you, you times it up, the quantum naturally goes up more. Mm. Mm. For investors, it needs to make sense. Yeah. So my guess is that the number of units that's available there, it's, for lack of a better word, it's, it's really not moving. Mm. Mm. We have not seen the. I mean, the number of that's, that's my guess. Yeah, I mean, this is what we can see currently yeah. that they're trying to exit, mm. but we have not seen like I don't know how long have they been marketing there for correct, how long correct, and yeah. stuff like that. So, those are the factors. That, we are, that we is are one sure alternative uh, viewpoint to consider as well. Mm. Yeah, but the I would say then the transactions at one North residences mm. is relatively healthy. Also, mm. uh, it's not say a lot mm. uh, kind of thing but uh, it's very prevalent when you can see in the property portals that there is a lack of supply in the area mm. uh, that's why I'm guessing uh, Blossoms by the Park went up by 70 plus percent yeah because generally uh, I would say that their layout is pretty similar to uh, what majority of people are it's just that they are on a slightly bigger level you have your one bed there from 500 uh, square feet, your two bedders from about 900 square feet, which is pretty common in that era kind of build. Mm, mm. Yeah, as compared to Rochester, where you have your one bedder from 840 and then your two bedders from 1002. The older kind of layout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe from what uh, John said, the duplexes kind of layout. Mm. Okay, so then let's talk about, you know, if you are an investor mm. entering into the hill, I mean, we, we want to compare. We want to compare with you know, perhaps we compare with the Rochester, we compare with One North, we, we compare with mm. Blossom. Mm. Mm. And then, of course, let, let's throw it up. Let's throw in something into the mix itself. What about going into something else in the OCR region? Mm. You know, perhaps, okay, you do not have that One North advantage. You do not have that rental advantage. Mm. Okay, because, um, you know, you you are proclaiming that rental is strong there. Broke. <laughs> Proclaiming okay. <laughs> or, or or rather the rental <laughs> amount, okay, the, the absolute amount that you can get in terms of rental there. Perhaps mm. for a two bader or, or three bader there you can hit seven K. Yes. Right. Elsewhere for a three bader, maybe my rental is lower. Mm. But my, my worry for for projects in this area is that the capital growth is a little bit lacking. Yes. So 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 that's why we prepared this slide. Right. Because uh before we, we started the shoot, we were trying to understand and be very objective in mm. terms of what we feel would be the angle for this uh, project mm. at uh, the hill at One North. Mm. So we were taking into comparison, uh, we try to take out as much as uh, as much outlier factors like such as COVID uptakes yep. and all that kind of thing right. out of the way. 
and then we see what are the capital appreciation uh, and then we compare it versus the rental disparity. Mm. Mm. So if you can see right here, we are comparing Dakota Crescent uh, at which is Waterbank. Waterbank, right. Yes. So Waterbank, averagely, they bought in a uh, sub-sale la, because you can immediately do your rental. Ma. Mm. So they immediately bought in sub-sale at about 1,003, I would say, an average. Yep. Actually, yeah. what's really there? What's huh? really there? Yeah. No, no, what's, so, so what's really la. at da Dakota? I mean, we, we, I mean, when we are comparing to two things, mm. we, when we are comparing one off, we, we say, wow, you know, rental is very strong because yep. the, the tech hub is there. Okay. okay. We are close to the train station. Mm. Blah blah blah. Mm. So so this is taking in comparison of a project that is maybe majority mass market. Mm -hmm. uh, you are near Hit Girls. You are near. You know, it's more of like family. Dakota planning. is also near Guanghua, right? Yeah. So yeah. more of family planning, okay. mass market Singaporeans buying, uh, not an investment kind of look, because we want to see whether is uh heavily investment uh power project better than a mass market project mm. better mm. yeah so that's why we took uh, dakota which similar time frame uh bought in at about i would say an average of 1003 after five years of holding uh in 2017 they sold it at about thousand six thousand five mm. so i say they are looking at about maybe 300 uh per square feet appreciation not, mm. not, not five years bro I think 2012 to 2017. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. five okay. years. Five years. So mm. about three to three fifty lah. If I stretch it, three hundred to four hundred PSF appreciation. Mm. Then if we pull out the next data at uh one north residences, mm. uh they bought in at about a thousand for sub sale, about nine eight hundred nine hundred one thousand one thousand one. So let's say a thousand, they sold it at twenty twelve five years or so. Mm. Uh, they sold it at about a thousand four, so about three four hundred. But this is very, this is very rare. Why? Because if we turn our head towards, Rochester. remember we said that Rochester is bigger. Mm. So if it's bigger, it should automatically sell cheaper mm. because of uh, wasted space or like mm. maybe duplex and all that kind of thing. But if we turn our heads towards uh, Rochester, you would realize that Rochester bought in at sub sale. Uh, at about a thousand four, mm. and they sold uh, after five years, right? At about a thousand three. So that's why entry price is very important, also. Right, it is. It, it is. is very important. Let's say, uh, let's say, uh, because right now we are co comparing Water Bank earning about say four hundred PSF mm. in capital appreciation, uh, one of residences earning about a three hundred. Mm. So there's a hundred thousand dollar disparity in terms of capital appreciation, mm, mm. but if my unit at one off can have a difference of seven thousand one, let let's say seven thousand, and then a a unit at a uh, water bank is called getting about six thousand dollar rental. Mm. That one thousand. Uh, that one thousand dollar for twelve uh, months, it will be twelve thousand. You times five, right? Maybe you're gonna get about sixty to eighty thousand mm. dollars, Let let's say it's a big good spread. Yeah. So generally, if I look at it very objectively, mm. uh, if I had bought either or, it is still okay. But if the moment I sell, if I hold longer than five years, right? Yep. I think my renter would give me much more money, and if I add the renter plus the capital plus appreciation. the capital appreciation, right? Mm. I can outperform. Uh, a mass market project. Okay, so two variables here. Yes. So one is that you need to go in at the correct entry price. Right. Yes. If you're going at the wrong entry price, your capital gain is not there. Correct. Then you need to compensate that through your so-called higher rental, mm. but then time. You yes. need to go five years, eight years, ten years. Yes, yes. Then that rental will will, That's right. will sort of um, offset, you mm. know, what whatever lack of capital gains that you can yeah. get from this particular project. Uh, so does that mean that this project you can't really hold for short term? Definitely, you definitely. So la later, I will sum it up. Okay, <laughs> I will, I will okay, up. okay. But I think from what what we are saying is is quite clear that uh, between Rochester as well as one off. So I think the key difference is that Rochester started at about if you go back to the really like a new launch kind of uh, stage, I think a couple of years be before this. That Rochester, be, uh, do I mm. have it? No, I don't have it. This yeah. is the most recent numbers. I didn't start it by the yeah. the launch mm. day. But ne never mind. Uh, go online and, and, and search. I think that Rochester launched at about 1,000, 1,001. Mm. One North 
launched at about 800 to 900. Yeah. So that's the difference there. Mm. Okay, so one, one thing, entry price. We always say entry price. If, if everything else status quo, it becomes entry price. Um, then if, you know, because we are, we are constantly saying about this being rental play, investment, rental play, you know, your, your rental will be high, rental you is good. Mm. You need to make sense of rental you. Okay, subsequently, yes, rental you will, will be good, but your capital growth, is it there? And then the net difference between what you can get elsewhere, maybe your elsewhere over there, you can get say 300K over here. Are you able to get that? Let's say minimally at least like a 200K or 150K and then the rest of the balance you are, you are, you are offset off by your rental gains in, mm. in difference. Yeah. Right. I think that is the key thing to consider. So, so what I'm pulling out now. Uh, yeah, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> the punchline. Because, line, because, uh, because, the punch I'm, because line. I'm looking at your screen, I was like, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What okay, do you so, show? So, so what I'm pulling out now uh, is to see how, because we need to let the viewers know, yeah, we can see uh, whether is it the right entry price or not, right? It's, 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 it's very not, hard. No, it's not so easy as saying, yes, strong or no. Yeah, yeah. so, so uh, what is the right entry price? If, let's say, a client comes up, John, what is the right entry price for uh, the hill at One North now? Okay, so, so, uh, so it's always. You, you need to start mm. off by thinking about two, two things. Okay. One is whether own stay or investor. Uh, okay, own stay yeah. got its own basket of consideration. Investor got its own basket of consideration. No, but investor and own stay right now, we've already compared uh, one-off residences mm. and water bank at Dakota. Mm. Uh, one-off residences already make better already. Ma, because they, 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 they launch 800 plus PSF. Mm. Uh. Yeah, so in terms of capital okay. appreciation. Then very, very easy. Uh. Then let's now just bring out very, very clear cut. The hill versus Blossoms. Mm. Uh, so I think Blossoms is has launched at 2004. 2004 average. Now it's about 2005. Mm. Yeah. Right. So I think it's very clear, clear cut. Are we going in at 2005, 2006? I think the PSF, I believe Kingston will price it close to Blossoms pricing. Mm. Okay. And I think end of the day, the hill is going to be positioning itself uh, for people who have missed out on Blossoms. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if you have missed out on Blossoms, right, and then you still want to go into the area of One North, mm. then naturally, you know, the pricing-wise, it would then make sense because right now the price in Blossoms is about 2005, average PSF. When the hill is going to launch it, probably about 2004 to 2006, average 2005, it's still around the same pricing as well. So basically, you're offering the same kind of options that's available right now in the market in One North by, by having more supply right now. Mm. 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 So, so Linton, you want to show your slide? Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so, so my slide is that I'm, I'm just trying to compare what is the pricing of this. This is actually, if you meet any of our consultants, they mm. are able to pull out this in program. So buying in previously for one of uh, residences, mm -hmm. uh, they bought in at about a thousand to a thousand one in back in 2017. Right. So I wanted to see what was the new launch prices then. Right. Were they buying in at under value or were they buying in at overvalue right mm. yeah so if we look at it right uh let me see what i can zoom uh around 2007 if we were to see for the new sale rcr over here uh at 2007 we are looking no, at about light blue right yes mm. the light blue we are looking at about a thousand no that one is 2000 oh, okay, your, okay your timing timing bro that, that spike there you you must here also la, notice la. that spike there yeah so 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 let's say at about a thousand Thousand fair to say, mm. we can all agree. Generally at a thousand, so they they did not, they they, they weren't buying under or over value. They were mm. just buying at, at the value, value Right. Then I'm just trying to make sense. Uh, if Rochester bought it in 2011 at about a thousand four, so they were also buying at generally, I would say market rate. Mm. So that's why the the point of entry. This this slide here shows right. What is the season uh, that different different property seasons has different good point of entry? Mm. Mm. So if we are in right now in twenty twenty four, are we in a launch season? Are we in a resale season? And all that that is very important. Mm. I, I I can safely say back in twenty twenty three that was more or less the season for the RCR launches. Mm. That's why Blossom did very well. Right. But right now where we are in 2024, uh, if you have followed our latest slide, we have actually uh, 13, 
13 launches in the OCR out of I cannot remember how many 40 or if I'm not wrong yeah 13 of them are in the OCR so mm. we have to then as a buyer you have to then ask your question will you if you buy into a project will you become like Rochester or will you become like one of residences mm. yeah so yes, that is that is the that is the question that you have to answer la. But end of the day, when we look at yeah. the pricing wise, um, I don't think that the pricing is wrong, mm. um, because if you look at the inter region kind of like pricing in terms of like RCR versus OCR, RCR versus uh, CCR, mm. um, there's definitely there's already a gap in yep. terms of the pricing, and right now what you're getting in um, basically this one the here at one north, mm. uh, two thousand five two thousand six PSF is pretty much the same price as what you may get at let's say. Grand Diamond. Correct. Grand Diamond is going for same. Uh, we were just looking at the two bedrooms. Uh, Grand Diamond mm, two bedrooms is at two thousand eight psf. Yeah. Okay. Um, size is about six hundred odd square feet versus this at seven hundred plus square feet mm. for two bedder. So, I mean, of course, depending on what is your need, depending on on why do you want to buy in one north? Mm. Is it because you believe in a one north um story? Is it because you see the vision of one north? Yep. Um, because when you look at the UI master plan for one north area, there's still a lot of white sites. Yeah, there are still couple of developments that's going to come up in the area which we all understand that it will help to propel the price in the area to mm. be uh, it to move up higher as well yeah. mm. so if you d- are a believer in that area and, and you may have already missed out on blossoms because you couldn't buy any two bedrooms yep. at the point in terms of launch mm. then this may be a project that you may want to consider because the pricing wise is not too far off from what you are getting from blossoms right now correct in fact mm. even versus towards their launch pricing I don't think that's too much far off as well okay mm. so so from me, I think uh, very clear cut in a sense. I mean, wh- whatever price that the developer choose to launch it at, uh, of course, we, we do have got a range there. Of course, if it goes lower than that, it's really then worth considering. Uh, main points are that if you miss out on bl- Blossom, okay, this is the next one, next opportunity for you to go into that area. Rental play for one off, okay, it's, it's strong and all of that, but we always put across the considerations, okay? Your exit strategy, mm. which ties in very closely with your entry price, mm. all right? And if you strongly believe in that area, you want to just um, park your funds in a pro- property there that gives you a strong rental for... And, okay, and we also need to talk about the time horizon, your game plan, okay? Mm. Typically from... Or? Yeah, typically from what we are seeing uh, of the performance of the project in that area, if you are going in for a short term flip, three years, four years, probably you can get something better elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you're, you know, you want to really just park it there, stress free, come back again after eight, ten years, then yes, something for you to look into. Yeah, mm. and yeah, and that that belief in uh, one off, which I think it is. Uh, strong a- evidence of how you know we we are really consolidating consolidating a lot of the tech hub companies there mm. they are all doing okay mm. the demand is there these are all all the facts the the rental demand is really there mm. yep. the rental prices are are, are there a- as well mm. but i think at the end of the day the capital appreciation whether your expectation of it hitting that 250 dollars psf growth or the 300 dollars psf growth does that happen in five years eight years or ten years mm. I think you need to be prepared for that as well. Mm. Right. Yeah. Lyndon, any last words? Uh, I would say my main point is if you are a viewer that you are looking to buy the hill at one north, you have to factor in at least a 10 years holding period. Mm. Uh, that would be key. Uh, sadly, because you have missed out on uh, as early as one north Eden or even Blossoms by the Park. Right. So that would be my key point. Uh, the second point is that uh, unless you are, it depends on what you're looking at. Like what John said, if you are purely looking at a capital appreciation, you're looking, uh, don't say three years, lah, say about five years mm. flip even. Mm. Uh, maybe this project might not be, might, might not reach your requirements in that time span. Mm. Yeah. Uh, with that said, doing a rental becoming a landlord is a totally different story also yep, yep. handling it uh and whether you have vacancy vacancy rates and all that kind of thing it's not for everyone not forgetting the higher tax as well correct the higher tax of a non, non-owner occupied yeah, scheme correct so uh time frame is very important in this project right now if you are able to hold 
uh, by all means go for it mm. because of the lack of supply in the area mm. and the upcoming white sites. Mm. Uh, but if you're not uh, in the long period of holding, there are better options out there uh, that you can l- let us know uh, mm. or arrange with us uh, that we can point you in the right direction to suit your time frame for mm. a possible capital appreciation because you are taking into consideration the fact of the progressive payment where you are paying so much so little just to get a bigger lump sum in capital appreciation yeah fair point fair point mm. i think um i think different buyer profile would have a different kind of needs and a different kind of uh, properties that would actually uh make sense for you and yep. it actually matches your requirement so you know do reach out to our new launch consultants uh, if you want to find out more and you want to also understand which are the projects uh, that may suit your current uh, life stage and uh, it may suit your current, um, I would say, investment timeline as well. Mm. And we can always happy to work out the numbers with you. So with that, uh, we hope that you have uh, enjoyed this uh, debate on One North. Uh, the hill at One North, <laughs> I keep talking about One North. <laughs> the hill at One North, <laughs> debate like, in a way, like, it's quite a heated one at some it's point in time. But, <laughs> but do um, like our uh, content on the PRB Insights channel for more of this new launch coverage. Uh, and with that, we have come to the end of this episode. Thank you very much for your time and take care. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye.